you beautiful people welcome back to weekly daily wednesdays where we sit back relax take that midweek break talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of linux and open source and basically anything we find interesting i am old man Vin, joined every week by joe bryan hello hello got a big show for you this week four really nice stories to talk about yeah. but first jill has a new because you know You've been talking for months and months and months, and you're like, dude, it has been years since I've bought a new keyboard. Uh, I've been dying yeah. to get a new keyboard. My keyboard's so old. I just wish I could get a new keyboard. There's just not possible. Can't no. make it happen. So, yeah, it turns out that I buy a lot of keyboards. <laughs> this beautiful pink gradient wireless keyboard is decorated with hearts and the word love and is one of their newest models it's called the ajaz nakodex it comes with a pretty pink mouse with hearts decorated on it it's just adorable <laughs> look at that man <laughs> little little heart motif i refuse to look at it i'm i don't need nightmares man i just got my eyes closed this entire time so i don't do it so i guess i'm not going to talk to you about There's some interesting news show up this morning mm -hmm. to which i went well that's going to be a problem for a lot of people what am i talking about reddit is now going to block all search engines other than google yeah. now they're doing this under the guise of misuse they've changed they've updated their api they've updated their robots now you know everybody's going to try to be cool and like well, i don't use me everybody uses it. everybody knows the site reddit trick because yeah why reddit has been the internet's forums for just about everything for going on almost 20 years and there's a lot a lot of static on reddit a lot of bad stuff but there's also some useful information if you go digging around in the right places so if you're on bing if you're on DuckDuckGo, if you're on i don't know uncle slappy search engine land those aren't going to be showing up anymore hmm. that's gonna be a problem did you see that yeah. coming who saw that coming i don't know i mean i didn't <laughs> there's a reason i launched a forum in 2024 people i'm just saying i'm not saying if there's a bit of connection there and uh unlike uh reddit i have a privacy policy that says who do i share your data with at interfacing linux one word kids nobody <laughs> hopefully forums are going to come back not just mine but everybody else's because reddit's did the ipo it's just going to get worse downhill from here so i want to keep that in mind visit your local bbs's like we used to back in the day there's yeah. a bunch of great ones a bunch of old ones like linux questions i got one on interfacing linux that's where you're going to be finding your data unless you're just like i'm just going to use chat gpt and you're still not going to get information from my site because i block ai scrapers there we go just a little heads up from old man Vin. all right let's go ahead and jump into it this week Maybe this happened to you. You went out and you bought a two <laughs> terabyte flash drive from AliExpress for 57 cents. And you're thinking to yourself, you know what? There might just might be just a wee chance that it's not legit. Maybe you got a suspicion. <laughs> no. Everybody listening to this show, you're like, well, that's an obvious scam, isn't it? Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right. You know, we're not going to fall for that. Let me go ahead and throw you a curveball, though. SanDisk. What I'm showing right now for the audio listeners, two packages of SanDisk, SanDisk Ultra 32 gig, indistinguishable. The genuine one is on the left. That's where it's it starts so well getting done. dangerous. Yeah. Because <laughs> at a glance, you don't see anything. I mean, we're talking down to like, you're really going to have to start comparing fonts and the embossing on the plastic. Yeah. Before you're like, oh, right. And crossroads. Like what I had to do with this PlayStation 4 controller because mm. I was told it's not genuine, but it was a bug in the software with a wireless connection. So fakes are everywhere and they're getting really, really, really good. And you know this Amazon is filled with them, they're really bad. Now, your two most common things you have to worry about when you're buying flash drives, flash memory. Well, a very common one, the old standard, is you get some, say it was two terabytes, right? And it reports to the system. It's like, yeah, you know, you plug it in, I'm two terabytes. And you start filling it up on the data, but it really only holds like 
500 mags, anything after that, it just starts zeroing it out. And there's (laughs) not a problem after that until you go back to try to read it. And you're like, where'd all my data go? I'm like, hello, LJK company's gone now. Or here's another one. The capacity might be correct, but it's got some S tier memory. Not, not what the kids consider S tier, but the old school meaning of S tier. It reads and writes at the speed of smell. You're like, oh, this is dumping. That's what I ran into this week with a friend who bought a Turbo Super Ultra HD whatever card. And they're like, this thing's really slow. It's not keeping up because they had a really nice camera. And they're like, is there a problem mm-hmm. with the camera? Like, bring the camera over. Let's play around with it. Finally tracked it down using this. This is not new. But I want yeah, to remind I everybody about it. F3. Fight. Flash. Fraud. Super simple tool really comes in handy. And it's not just one thing, it's a collection of tools. There's a bunch of stuff in here to play around with. You'll be able to verify your performance. You can check your drive capacity. And here's a really neat one. Let's say you got one, you know, somebody, you get like a two terabyte drive and it really is like 500 gigs. You can rewrite it to reformat it to report the correct size if you just need to keep it around. You know, actual capacity fix. Super dope, super neat, super handy. And on top of that, there's even a GUI for Arch users. Yeah. Look at that. Yay. <laughs> oh, wait, well, yeah, I can't say Arch. Nix users. There we go. That's the new one I'm going to pick on for no reason, just because <laughs> yeah. I love them. Uh, yeah, there's a QT GUI uh, for F3. You plug it in, you click check. It's going to tell you what the real free space, well, what the free space is, what the actual free space is, and it's going to give you a read speed, write speed. Super simple. Some you need to think about, even with flashes you got laying around the house, because if you're listening, go back and watch the video version. You very well could have some fake flash media floating around your house, and you might not want to put anything terribly important on that, because I know a lot of you got Raspberry Pis, SBCs, and we just buy sleeves of flashcards. At least I do. And you got to be careful with that. You really do. Now, the good news is, you don't have to go install Flatpak. You don't have to download anything. F3, like I said, it's been out for quite some time. Ships with most distributions, including Debian, including Fedora, including Arch. So you don't have to worry about it. But it is a tool that I want you to have in your toolbox. And it's something I want you to use because you can't trust anything. Like outside of going to a physical, re- you know, if I ordered something from like b and I would have a little bit of faith in it. Yeah. I order something on Amazon. You have to do your due diligence on Amazon these days. It is not a guarantee that you're going to get a genuine product yeah. anymore, not by a long shot. So keep that in mind. You can uh, check our show notes, but if you want to go to fightflashfraud.readthedocs.io, you can get all the information or just head over to Linux Gamecast and check the show notes, click on it. There'll be a link and use it. Go check mm-hmm. your thumb drives, check your flash media. Check your SSDs. Now, I yeah. think another one was, uh, you know, we've all seen the pictures of the, you know, like 500 gig SSD and somebody opens it up and it's just like a flash card in mm-hmm. there. You're like, oh man, oh, you know, maybe a weight, you know, the uh, perceived value weight. Mm-hmm. I showed one of those off in the uh, EVGA XR1 light capture card because it was just a plastic shell. They just put a block of metal in it. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Oh, yeah, <laughs> now it feels like a hundred dollar product. Yeah, you take that out. You're like, well, there's not much to it. What do you think about this, Jill? Something you're going to use? Oh, you're going to pop oh, it in? Check it out? Absolutely. And I have used it on and off, but, you know, I've forgotten about it. So it's it's nice that Ben uh, brought it back up again to tell us about it. And, uh, you know, what? what's sad, Ben, is it used to be you could rely on Amazon uh, for their, you know, the their, their products would be legitimate. But a lot of the products are coming from AliExpress and Timu, and they're not always <laughs> legit. <laughs> well, you see, this is the thing. If you order from AliExpress, yeah. If you do, AliExpress is Amazon's about on parity with AliExpress these days. Where like these days, yeah. You do your research, and they're both equally dodgy. Timu, you're just going to get junk, fake off, cheap stuff. That yeah, that's Timu's business part. model. Like that's yeah. what they're there for. Up next, we got Steam Sprout because uh, when I think about restreaming. Uh, you know, we're here on OBS, we're doing a stream, maybe you want to stream it to YouTube, maybe, well, it's basically yeah. YouTube. Uh, I think about vegetables. 
Yeah. <laughs> I just thought this was uh, wonderful. So our friend Martin Wimpress, or Wimpy, has released another cool application to help the Linux community. It is called Stream Sprout. And Wimpy states, Stream Sprout is a simple, self-contained, and easy-to-use solution for streaming to multiple destinations, such as Twitch, YouTube, Owncast, and PeerTube. And what's awesome is the marvelous FFmpeg, you know, is at the heart of Stream Sprout, as many media applications on Linux are. This is awesome. This, this bypasses that, that whole need uh, to have those services, at least here on Linux. It's really nice. And uh, Stream Sprout uses a simple YAML file that runs on your computer with OBS installed. But it can be run remotely, and it doesn't even require root access. <laughs> this is just marvelous. <laughs> this is pretty neat. One thing you need to keep in mind, though, this does not, uh, you know, you, a couple of months ago, we, uh, I did a bunch of experiment with setting up Nginx and doing the restream. You know, we were restreaming on um, yeah. Facebook, Twitch, YouTube. That. One thing yeah. this does not do, as pointed out, RTMPS, which is secure. So a service like Facebook, you cannot use it sure. to stream to at all. It's just not going to happen until that functionality gets added later. I do have a long documentation that uh, me and Jordan kind of worked on. As a guide to set that up, I've been hesitant to push it out just because I'm like, yeah, I probably don't, because there's some trickery you got to do to make that part work. I understand why it's not supported in this. So I love to see it, but something I want everybody to keep in mind. When you're doing this at home and you're doing it locally, you're multiplying your bandwidth, your upload bandwidth. So if you got six megabits going on on Twitch, and here's another thing you need to keep in mind. I didn't get a chance to play with this, but I'm assuming it is just, you know, since it's not doing any transcoding. So if you're doing six megabits, uh, that's going to be 12. If you want to do to, you know, stream to YouTube and you want to stream to Twitch, you want to add another service. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. One thing you're not going to be able to do with this, since it's not doing any type of transcoding, is say I wanted to do like just because we're limited to like six or seven megabits on Twitch, but I wanted to send like 10 to YouTube. That would be two different things. I don't think this is going to be able to pull that off, but it looks simple enough to set up. So give yeah. that a look, play around with it, and uh, have a good time. Yay. Now, normally <laughs> we talk about a slice of pie, and there hasn't been a whole lot lately. Not a whole lot going on. I haven't had much to bring up. Mm hmm. We don't have just one to talk about this week. We yeah, got we have two. two. Starting yeah. with a, uh, we got to work on these names, though. We really got to work on these names. Man's like, oh man, have you heard about the U2500 yeah. hat? I'm like, <laughs> oh man, that's better than the KL131612 hat, man. <laughs> yeah. So the, it's, it's called the U2500, and it is a dual function expansion module Raspberry Pi 5 hat that features an M.2 NVMe drive slot as well as two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. This is for projects that require high-speed storage and networking for databases, media services, and high-performance computing tasks. And this hat can be securely mounted on the Pi via four mounting holes, and you can still have access to the 40-pin GPIO on the Raspberry Pi 5. So it's available now, and... I think that's it's it's really awesome to have one device that does two things because then you don't have to stack hats on top of each other and it's difficult to do that because of you know the the way the layout of the boards and you know it may not work well so <laughs> this is nice that two functions and one hat. <laughs> I mean, if you read out and you bought a Raspberry Pi, you know these accessories are finally coming out. You know, because mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of us are like, wait, we didn't get an M.2 slot on the Pi Pi. Like, well, you know, hey, check this <laughs> out. We're gonna give you a little fussy ribbon cable, and you can do a hat <laughs> with it and stack it on top. It'll be 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. I'm like, so about that fussy little ribbon cable. This kind of simplifies it a bit. You get the two 2.5 gigs. You get an NVMe hole. Plug mm -hmm. it in. You got it. Like Jill said, you got access to your GPIO. So you should be good to go. And it's not like going to break you expensive. It's like 50 bucks, right? Yeah. That's only number one. Because number two, <laughs> like if you want everything all together, but for real, let's talk Rexada X4. <laughs> Radza. <laughs> Ragza. X4. Going to give it to you. N100 <laughs> SBC. $60 and up. Oh, yes. They launched their X4 Series SBCs, and these immediately sold out. 
Now, after reading up on the specs, I'm not really surprised with this. This credit card size critter, it packs 4 or 8 gigs of RAM, those 2.5 gig Ether Noodle, M.2, USB 3.2, and a hat connector, all in a 25 watt package. It even has that Raspi 2040 built into it for your Tensor Learning Bits, all for 60 bucks. 80 if you want the 8 gig version. But that real gem, x86 and 100 CPU. What's that mean? That means better video encoding, decoding, extra PCI Express lanes, all compared to the Raspberry Pi 5. And it's going to work with basically anything you want. Why? Because it's x86, kids. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it. And that's been the problem. Remember when the pie shortage it showed up, right? About four yeah. years back. This is going to be an opportunity. It's going to be an opportunity for other manufacturers of single board computers. It is. Like they're going to get on it. But we've been waiting for them to pick up the slack. We've seen like Rock Pie, Orange Pie, a bunch of these coming out. Nobody's really like the big shining star showed up. And there's a reason for that. What I said, it's going to be the first one of those to get their software stack together. Because that's the one thing Raspberry Pi yeah. has. That all the community. software, all the ARM yeah. SBCs tied together. You know, you got to play around with each and every one of them. You know, you're waiting for like mainline kernel support and all this other stuff. Or maybe this program doesn't work. You're going to have to recompile this. A lot of that's taken care of with Raspberry Pi. And it's a good thing. And that's why they've been sticking out so well. However, this is x86. Those problems don't exist. Everything you currently are using is just going to work on it. There's your curveball right there. I did not pro project <laughs> this happening. And this thing is the size of a credit card. This thing yeah. is 60 bucks. It is x86. You need five of these. You need two of them to run Windows for like whatever ancient. Just put Windows on it and you're done too. What, what Linux? Uh, do all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> what do I have to do to get this to compi compile it? Yeah. And you're done. There's no reason these, like, when I saw these, they were like, just gone immediately. This, <laughs> I didn't see this because four years ago, when we were talking about x86, they weren't this small. Like, this thing's the size of a Raspberry Pi form factor. Yeah. All right? Four years ago, they were like micro ITX boards. Mm hmm. And, and expensive. They were, yeah. About <laughs> 400 bucks. So, yeah. like, like, okay, whatever. Those don't. So, we were focusing on like rock chip type stuff and we're like, okay, who's going to be the next? Who's going to be the next? Didn't think we'd be here. These N100 processors have showed up in a lot of stuff, you know, like little BPCs and stuff like that that you see. This is just like Gen 1 from one company. This is going to be the disruptor. This is guaranteed. Didn't see this one coming. Uh, I'm going to get mm -hmm. one. There's no reason not to. Let's get the M.2. It's PCI Express 3.0. It's, it's just there. It's ready to go. Yeah. It's about 25 watts. So, I mean, if you're like really thinking about like power requirements, okay, you know what? I don't even know if you want to get a, get a Pi 4. <laughs> Maybe not a Pi 5. It's got a power hungry. But it does have a Raspberry Pi bit attached to it because everybody wants to do the AI thing and this thing can kind of do 0.5 of an AI. So, uh, yeah, man, very mm -hmm. exciting. And it's got the 2.5 gigabit built on the board. Don't yeah. need a hat for this one, Jill. Yeah, and it's, and it's even got uh, PoE support as well with the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. And it has a headphone jack with microphone support and two micro HDMI 2.0 ports up to 4K60 using the 24 EU Intel HD graphics. And like Ben was saying, it's credit card sized and it's an Intel Alder Lake N x86 powerhouse running at four cords, four threads, and up to 3.4 gigahertz max turbo frequency. <laughs> It's, it's pretty amazing. It's probably, I think it's the most, one of the most amazing mini cards we've ever talked about here on the show. <laughs> they did a pretty good job with this. And, yeah. you know, I, I'm probably just going to go ahead because uh, what were we talking about? Uh, who, who was the name of the company? I, I see Arthur and talking about it. I was like, I might pick up one or two. What was the other company that made the funky ones I was thinking about buying, but I wouldn't buy their power supply on principle? Oh, um, yeah. Uh, Zima. 
Zima, Zima, Zima board. board. Yeah, the Z in it. Yeah, they were <laughs> yeah, like Zima. 99 bucks. A- effectively the same thing, but those things were bricks, right? Yeah. You know, think like a l- old school laptop power supply. One of the, that was about mm-hmm. roughly the same size. This, mm-hmm. this thing's tiny. Yeah. This thing's tiny. They get it all shoved <laughs> out. No, admittedly, the CPU is put on the back, but well, let's make good use of that PCB. Mm-hmm. Fun times. <laughs> yeah. Fun times. Looking forward to it. I want to see what type of cases come out for this. They showed off the cooler. You know, you yeah. could run this without a cooler. Yeah. No, and again, the um, N100's on the back of the board. It's right there, but, uh, you know, it's got like a little heat sink on it, but they got a heat sink case or at least a 3D render of a heat sink case that you might be able to get for it. But it's an N100. You don't necessarily need active cooling on one of these unless you're just, you know, slamming all four cores, four threads. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good to see. Happy to see it. Uh, this gets me excited because there's a lot of power in this, and it's cheap. It's sixty dollars, yeah. people. Sixty bucks. It's not sixty dollars. It's not okay. It's not seventy dollars. But now I got to buy a case. Now I got to buy a power supply. Now I got to buy a fifty dollar hat. Mm-hmm. You know, and that turns into one hundred and fifty, two hundred bucks real quick. That's sixty bucks. I, I think about teenagers. I think about kids. You know, somebody that wants a tinker device. We're back in business, lads. Yeah. Love to see it. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it this week. Yeah. Hey, do you get a chance to tune in live? Do I go, Come say hi. Pop in the chat. Doesn't cost anything. Over on Twitch, all the links on LinuxGameCast.com. All the previous shows, you can download the podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, yeah, the old school. We've got a real podcast, RSS feed. Plug that in if you don't want the video version. But we do do a special video version for our patrons, all the people who make this show possible. The reason you don't get commercials, you don't get us going to any weirdness. We're just like, say what we're going to say. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. I process one out. There's no ads in it. You can download it. Do whatever you want to it. And you get the live and uncut versions a week early. Because, hey, it takes us about an hour to make this 20, 30 minute show every yeah. week. You want to go back, relive that live experience? I got you covered. <laughs> Not only in video, but I make it a podcast too. Oh, Yay. now how much would you pay? Whatever you want. Go over to the support tab. Buck a week. We really appreciate it. And we have Libra Pay, PayPal. You know, if you get the extra jingle, jingle laying around, mm-hmm. we'd appreciate it. And I promise you, we'll put it to good use. But that's going to do it for this week. Have a oh. great rest of it. And we'll yeah. see you again <laughs> next Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Check that out. Now, a big thank you with some credits. Yes. This is the time we thank all our beautiful patrons, including our advisors, Omegas and Artharen, our executive producers, David, Drummer, Eshep, Ian, KR Ducky, our Chicago Kicks People Level, Empty, Blasphemia, Super Dust Out, <laughs> and our Sea Monsters, System T, Mark, DS and G Joe, Dirty Dean, our Death Notes. Benjamin, Doom to Wad, Stephen B, our chairlings, Greg Hibbard, Douglas Hitchcock, Thomas, too many of the of you beautiful people to name <laughs> in one quick uh, sitting. <laughs> see Thomas, see Thomas run. Yeah. <laughs> all right, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Love you all. Yeah, let me know in the comments, though. You gonna buy one of those? Uh, are you even excited yeah. about this X eighty six stuff? I saw that and I'm like, ah, I want to go play with that. I want two of them. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you next week. <laughs>